Hey folks. So this is the first, pro well, second project that I have done for the $30 micro RTF project that I've been working on for a little while now. Um, as you can see, it's a P38. It's got a 12 inch wingspan. Um, I think it was around four and a half grams. I had built a, uh, an eight inch model and it was so light and it had so much nose area compared to rudder area. Uh, and the thrust differential is so strong on these electronics that I could get it to fly straight But you turn just the slightest bit and it would just cartwheel itself right out of the air uh, It broke the nose clean off at one point on the smaller model which kind of turned it into a G38 light cruiser Which looked cool, but it wasn't P38 anymore and it actually flew a little better that way But you still had to be very very careful on the rudder or it would still just throw itself onto the ground basically uh, but this one being a, a bigger wingspan and having a little more mass, it was able to tame the thrust differential down a little bit. I also shortened the nose. The nose, like, nose is usually about that long uh, originally. And so I shrank it down because this is basically acting like a giant rudder up in front. So when you start to turn, it wants to keep turning it. And for as strong as the thrust differential is, there's still only four millimeter motors. And I found that if I went into too steep of a dive and turn it had a really hard time climbing back out but um, for a maiden it went pretty well I did some more trimming on it later and was able to get it to fly pretty well I already took the electronics out because I've already got them in a new model that I'm about to maiden sometime in the near future here um, but yeah uh, I'll the build part of the video uh, will be right after this and then the uh, maiden is after that so yeah thanks for watching so I trim quite a bit of this build out just because it's pretty straightforward. You're basically just cutting out the templates and then tracing the templates onto the balsa and then cutting the balsa out. Uh, I did make one mistake here though. I went with 1 16th inch for the booms just to give them a little more strength, but I wanted to use 1 32nd inch for the rudder to save a little weight on the tail. And the rudder has a slot cut into it as you can see, and that's for the horizontal stabilizer. And that has like negative 3 degrees built into it. And so when I went to glue that rudder back onto the boom, I didn't get it lined up just right on both sides evenly. And that would have definitely caused some trimming issues later. So I had to break that glue joint at some point and re-glue it so everything was actually straight. So uh, I would strongly recommend doing the rudder and boom all as one place so you save yourself that problem. But yeah, just doing a little bit of sanding here. I do like to bevel all the edges. Um, at these tiny scales, aerodynamics do still matter. It probably doesn't make a big difference, but it looks nicer too. Uh, a little bit of a yellow paint and some Sharpie lines go a long way to give it some definition and detail. But just uh, getting ready to glue in the dihedral angle here. I thought it was enough, but it may have benefited from a little bit more. It has maybe inch and a half, two inches worth on there, but uh, she still wanted to tuck and dive if I turn too sharply so something to consider when you're making yours but yeah just getting ready to glue the rudders on and again I, I definitely should have just done it as one piece um, I glued the first rudder onto the first boom and it looked fine and then I glued the second rudder to the second boom and compared the two together and I could tell that the slots were they were off by a millimeter and a half maybe two and considering how long that horizontal stabilizer is, I imagine that would have given me some pretty big trimming issues later. So I ended up having to break one of those rudders off and realign everything and re-glue everything. So yeah, I should have just done it as one. About to start making some lines on the wings. This is just to tell me where the booms are going to sit on the wings. It, helps quite a bit when you go to assemble everything just helps keep everything nice and square and then just uh, measuring those marks for the lines so that I know that they're even so that when I glue the booms on they'll actually be in line and then I compare that to the lines on the horizontal stabilizer to make sure everything will be square when everything is glued in place a little bit of time here goes a long way to saving yourself some hassle and when you go to assemble everything. And, uh, measuring the cord of the wing here 
so I can cut the slot on the boom a little bit. It was only off by a millimeter or two, but that was enough to keep the boom from sliding down on the wing far enough to for it to sit where it was supposed to. And once the wing slots were finally cut properly, I could do a dry fit, and it looked like everything was going to line up pretty well. So here's where I actually do the final assembly. I use these little square blocks. They go a long way in keeping everything straight while you're gluing everything in place. And I usually use just a small dab of glue during this first assembly just to make sure everything is straight because if you have to move something you don't want to have to try to break a giant glue joint much easier to deal with just a little dab And just gluing on the center fuselage part, and the assembly is, well, for the fuselage is done. Uh, it could have been a little lighter. I could have gone with a thinner boom material, but that's a pretty long boom to have anything much thinner than that. Otherwise, it gets pretty flexible and a lot easier to break. And then it's just installing the electronics, which is pretty straightforward. Um, again, just a little tiny dab of glue to hold it in place. It doesn't need much. When I go to mount the receiver and battery, I made the mistake of putting it on the wing itself, and I eventually moved it to the center section of the fuselage. Uh, that way you have as much of the weight centered right in the middle of the plane as possible, and that makes turning a lot easier and pulling out of dives a lot easier as well. Uh, for the center of gravity, I had the battery located right in front of the leading edge of the wing. It probably could have been just a little further back, but it was acceptable for a maiden at least. Uh, like I said earlier, I was able to do a few more trimming flights and it worked out a lot better with the battery tucked just behind the leading edge of the wing. But yeah, that's about it. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Uh, the all-up weight was about a gram heavier than the original $30 micro RTF, so that wasn't too bad. And it's a P-38, not a foam high-wing plane, so I'd say that's a step up for sure. And uh, here goes the Maiden. I'm still looking for a better camera. This Mobia camera with the wide-angle lens has a tendency to turn my microplanes into micropixels at a pretty short distance, so kind of useless for these kind of videos, but better than nothing, I guess. And right here you can see it pitch down and dive because I turned a little too sharply, and again, I think that's because of the motor or the uh, electronics position being too far out on the wing. Um, it didn't help also that one of the motors was a different resistance, so the trimming was kind of messed up to begin with. But Again, for a maiden, I'll definitely take it.
There's a little bonus here, some crash footage of the 8-inch model I had built. Not sure I ever had a model that was so determined to just throw itself into the ground like this one did. Just too light and not enough rudder area. It would fly straight sometimes, but you touch the rudder once and off it goes. But I've got a couple other models lined up, so stay tuned for those, and thanks for watching.